30, we'll call this uh, meeting to order. We have the roll call, please. Jesse Fetcher. Here. Ed Peters. Here. Jason Weaver. Here. Clark Helwig. Here. Brian Bizanet. Here. Ch Kevin Chapman. Here. All right, 100%. <clears throat> That's definitely a quorum. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so compliance meeting this meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statutes. Okay, public comments. Uh, this time members of the will be given an opportunity to address the committee for items not on the agenda, limited to three minutes. Uh, we have two requests here. Barbara, do you want to speak now or? Okay, you'll have uh, three minutes. Go ahead. Hey, my name is Barbara O'Brien and I live on and own property on Old Double O Road in Lenroot Township. I'm here to talk about the Sealy Trails. I was out of town for the June meeting, so that's why I wasn't here. First, I want to publicly thank Greg Peterson. He met with a group of concerned citizens about the trails on May 16th. He came prepared with suggestions and maps to address our concerns. We gave him a list of anticipated outcomes and requests based on the county's comprehensive plan. Even though there will not be a buffer, as I still would like, we have made some progress. These are the results of the meeting. The Sealy Trails will be noted as a dedicated non-motorized recreational area known as the Sealy Hills Rec Area. It will be rezoned as Zone A. Future logging, including that already under contract, will be cut so there will be thin, long islands of trees left along some of the trails. These islands will then be logged after the area has regrown another five to 10 years. Loggers will be instructed to cut so the trees fall away from the marked trails. Loggers will clear the trail and paths after logging and the trails will need to be marked with ribbons. Greg is going to let Tom Geyer know when an area will be logged so ribbons can be put out along the trails. We can replant parts of the logged area of the trees, species, as long as the species are approved by Greg. Greg will be put, putting a gate or a berm on the part of the trail that comes off of eight. In addition, this committee should be aware that over 150 volunteer hours per year have been dedicated to maintaining and grooming those Sealy trails. Over 320 signatures supporting a buffer on the trails has been submitted to this committee, and I have an additional 25 signatures today. I'm also providing you with a set of pictures, some taken last year, some taken yesterday. And as you can see from these pictures, the trail doesn't look any better yesterday than what it, than what it did from last year. The other side of the pictures is one of my favorite areas taking along the trails yesterday. And I want you to take a look at it. As you can see, it is not attractive. It is not warm. It is not welcoming. And in addition, it's awfully hot because there's no trees there for shade. I read to you a quote from the county's current and proposed 15 year old, 15 year plants. Both state that the purpose of aesthetic management is to minimize negative aesthetic impacts of timber harvesting. The goal of the Fo County Forestry Committee will be to protect or to enhance the aesthetic value of this unique natural resource. This committee could implement and meet the intents of the county's comprehensive plan by directing that there be a buffer in the trails. At least for now, as a result of Mr. Peterson reaching out, we have a start of compromise. However, once these trees are cut along the trails, it will take another 40 to 50 years for these trails to look as scenic and welcoming as they do now. I'd like to thank again Mr. Peterson for meeting with us, listening to us, and being willing to work with us to implement the management plan for the area going forward. Let's support the Silent Sports Committee, Tourism Industry, and Logging. The county benefits from all three. Thank you for your time and your service to local government. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yeah, my, my Okay, hearing none, uh, entertain a motion for consideration of approval of minutes from last month. We have a motion by Mr. Peters to approve the minutes. A second. second. And a second by uh, Mr. Sheptic. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes.
events. When presented this month. When presented this month. Okay. Over the counter land sales discussion and possible action. We have a treasurer. Yes. Um, do we want to, Andy, discuss um, Act 216 and then the authority before doing this because that might change? Yeah, I can just explain. I, I asked for Act 216 and uh, Jean and I talked about the direct sale process just to bring that to the committee. So Act 216 was passed in the most recent legislative session and signed into law. And I guess I just want to make the committee aware of it, uh, change land sales tax foreclosure land sales by the county going forward. Essentially what it says is that uh, when, a, when a county took a tax deed property before, uh, you end up putting it out for sale to recover the back taxes um, and you were able to keep the proceeds. Now you're only able to keep the, uh, the, the, I should say the net proceeds for the sale if there are any surplus have to be, you have to find the property owner and try to return the money to them. The, the owner used to have, it used to be um, 60 days that they could come back. Now it's five years. So they've extended the, the time frame. Um, so Janine and I have talked a little bit. It's net proceeds. Uh, one of the things that we um, should have been doing and need to do a better job of going forward is tracking our actual costs of the sale. The cost of taking the property, the cost of any maintenance while we hold it, and then the cost of the sale and that can be included in the amount the county contains for the sale of the property. And we're obligated then to track them down or we they have it's up to them. It's their responsibility to come to us within that five years. We notify them. Obviously they should be aware that their taxes are delinquent. Um, they do get notification, but they now instead of having that 60 day window, they have five years to say we can get the net proceeds from the, the sale. And, and this was just passed in the most recent session. So is it effective immediately? It was the effective date, um, I believe was March 31st, April 1st. So the properties we currently have that are out for sale right now are not affected, but it will be in this next process that we have going forward. Okay, so 31 March, so that it's not retrograded at all? No, back there. Okay. no. Okay. Um, do we have to, uh, what do we need to do here? We need to go through each of these individually or can we do all three at once? Well, I think one more between, before we do that is Andy had um, drafted a letter just for an update versus, you know, stating what the current policy is or how we've gone through this and maybe doing a little change. So Andy, if you want to yeah. elaborate. So right now the properties you have, we'll be talking about in a few minutes or over-the-counter land sales. So what over-the-counter land sales are is um, the county takes the property on the tax foreclosure, um, then it puts, them all, puts, puts a bid price on them, they get advertised for bids, usually in the fall. People bid on those and you take the bid that's most advantageous to the county and the property is sold. Anything left that is not bid on goes on the over-the-county, over-the-counter sale list. And so uh, Janine had interest in the properties, but when we looked at the statutes, um, I think the practice has been that it comes back to this committee and then you approve the sale. And really, you would have to do that. Um, once you put the properties on the over-the-counter over land sale list, and they've already been noticed for public sale, and you've already set the bid price at the market value, the treasurer could just go ahead and sell the property to the first person that walks in the door and offers that price. Um, that's where I've, Kind of outlined in the memo and copied in the statute for your for your reference. As long as it's been advertised as a class one notice and established at a minimum price set by you, which you've already done, the clerk could just go ahead and make the sale rather than having to come back to the committee. If the price were to be lowered below the market value for a future sale, that would have to come back to the committee for for approval. I think that's been done. Um, I believe somebody said after one year, usually the committee looks at them again. And yes. Lowers the price. Yeah, potentially could go down 25% um, if it's not selling that previous year. Um, this year, obviously, the market is a little bit different. I won't recommend that we do that. I, I would say going forward, we take the ones that are out there. Um, 
keep them you know open to the public to come in and purchase but yet maybe take one step forward and maybe go to the land up to the um, auctions auction sites because a lot of counties around are doing that and they're doing very well so right. basically risk, uh, there's a risk then of getting a much lower price or would you have a there's a minimum bid a minimum? Okay. yeah there's a minimum which would be basically what the minimum is okay. is set here yeah i mean that sounds like uh I like, I like the auction market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that's, you know, basically right now, current procedure is somebody can come in, um, complete an application. It then comes to land water for approval, and then it goes to full county board for approval. So basically what we're looking at is just um, because once we have the um, land identified and we've put the notices out, somebody can now just come to the counter, fill out an application, submit payment um, without going through the, the board, or we can put them out for an option. And so are the uh, surrounding counties doing that as well, the first part where they can just come in and, and pay that amount? Without? Yes, Okay. yes. In fact, I've taken many phone calls and they've said why, you know, we've talked to other counties and we, do, you, we don't have to do that. He doesn't have to go to the boards. So that's why but these three today were they these three today these applications came in prior to so you know we can continue um and if they get approved we can go to but or do we want to move forward um because i think the current practice is to take it to the committee and to the board for these three we should do that okay okay but i think going ahead you don't, you don't have to do we have to do it with these three? I, you know, we couldn't find any policy written down anywhere. Right. It was just the way that's been done. So. So, I, I mean, mean I, I realize that the rest of the, the, the board, the county kind of board supervisors, when we bring these to the full board, they, they don't know. They just, they're going to say whatever right. the committee recommends mm -hmm. generally. I mean, so if we don't have to send it to the full board, there's no statutory obligation to do so that I think that just takes up extra time for the full board and I don't I don't think we need to do that so we can vote on them here today as a committee but you're saying we don't have to send them to the full board and just approve it here and that's it that is that what you're saying the only thing we questioned was the notice yeah we didn't go to the you can do you don't have to go back to the the clerk the treasurer excuse me the treasurer can sell them all right as long as they've been advertised by a class one notice, which is a one week run in the paper. And I don't know if that was done last year. It, well, it would have been done last year because of the um, sealed bid process. But like Andy is referring to, because of prior practice, um, you know, does that still, I would think that would still hold, but I don't know. I guess just to be on the safe side, what I recommend is do these three to the board. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take the current land list was left and put that on a class one notice. Yes. And then that'll be the notice will state that the land can be purchased directly from the clerk or treasurer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will take that recommendation. So at this time, then we need uh, you need a motion to approve. To approve. The and then my question is, can the motion be for all three of them? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I will entertain a motion then at this time for these three land sales. Make a motion to okay, we have a motion by Mr. Peters for the approval of these three over the counter. Land three, sales. These three parcels for over the counter land sales. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Awesome. Okay, we have a second by Mr. Sheffley on the approval. Uh, any further discussion? I'll just ask, is there any reason why, in your opinion, they shouldn't be approved? No. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying nay. Okay, hearing none, motion passes. Okay, uh, going on to item number nine, land records and county surveyor department report. 
Yeah, I really have nothing to report. Um, just life is normal going on. Nothing other than it's summertime and it's really busy with the public coming to the door at this time of year. It takes up your day. Other than that, just life is as usual. And we have okay. Nothing else I mean, going on. Sometimes no news is good news. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go on to number 10. And for this item, uh, we do have a public comment. It's a uh, review board policy and procedure manual. Uh, Ms. Zilmer, you'll have three minutes. Linda Zilmer, 902 Holly Hill Lane, Birchwood, uh, Edgewater property owner. And in over my 20 years of attending county committee and board meetings, I've watched the evolution of um, departments being able to present to their committees uh, and changing the form of government from administrative coordinator to administrator. So when I look at the roles and responsibilities and having sat here when they were developed, I know that when those were developed, it was by a committee who was not very familiar with um, the roles and responsibilities of the departments. Um, and as far as budgeting, the budgeting has been done for several years just by the administrator uh, working with the departments and then only presents a line item budget to this committee. So there are a number of things that I would suggest that um, the committees, not just this one, but especially this one, especially as it relates to agriculture extension and the overlap with zoning, that during the budget process, you look at the department revenues. So for example, Department of Ag, Trade, Consumer Protection provides a substantial amount of the funding for the salaries of conservation and zoning, as well as money and funds to do conservation projects. Uh, and so as you understand that, you might better understand the roles and responsibilities of this committee. And I would also encourage that the, the revised draft include things more specific about, this. for instance, the land and water resource management plan, which uh, definitely has an impact on uh, development and zoning. And I think it's really helpful to understand the crossover between committees and as you develop those roles and responsibilities. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other comments on this topic? If not, uh, Andy, what do you uh, got? Yeah, this is one of the committees that uh, had uh, some information already in the board policies and procedures. Um, believe that the committee, a prior committee, uh, put this together. Uh, I didn't see anything glaring that was missing or was out of line with what's listed there. So, so I, I do. So okay. in the board policies and procedures manual, um, the name of this committee is, has three different names. And I, as the chair, I don't know what the real name of this committee is. So, I would like that to be codified and we just, whatever name we're going to call ourselves, we need to just use that one name. Because right here, land, water, forestry, survey, land records, and register of deeds. Or, uh, I mean, what, I don't know what this committee is called, officially. I know in here we say land, water, forest resources, but in the, the policy manual, it's, has different names, a couple different names. One of them includes zoning in the name. So if we could uh, just clean that up. And you mentioned, uh, you know, one statute in there, 92.06, but there's no other statutes that I see listed like I think it's 2711 or 2811 on the, which gives the, this committee, you know, the uh, statutory authority to kind of, you know, manage the, the county forest. And I don't know if, if that needs to be, you know, we need to include that statute number. It's either 2711 or 2811. And I, I'm asking them, uh, stating that that needs to be. But yes, the some previous uh, you know members of this committee have obviously done some work and included 
quite a bit in the in the policy manual compared to some of the other committees that don't really have anything. I think the committee name of the Yeah, I guess that's one edit I have and the one that was distributed to the board. It's land, water, and forest resources. That's so if we could have that, yep. you know, so if that's our name, that's great. I like that. Um, but when you throw in those other words with it, like zoning and, uh, you know, the survey and all that other stuff, include that in the name, that's, it gets to be a little bit long. So then what else do we need to do on this? Um, I think what you're doing. Okay. You're giving me uh, things that we should be looking at to include. Um, I can look up the statute for county forest. And do um, you remember what that is? No, I don't. Okay. 2811. 2811. Okay. 2811. So yeah, it's, and I only say that because it's pretty important because it grants this committee a lot of authority uh, in what and how we manage our county forest. Like I was surprised reading it, like at how much you know, statutory power basically that gives us. So I don't know if it needs to be in there, but uh, probably wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to just list that statute. Like I said, only because you list another you know, statute on the, the Farm Service Agency. So that will be on the agenda for next month then for review after edits. Yeah. So uh, I guess just changing the title and then because the uh, areas of jurisdiction, I think having having those other items in there to spell out our connections <coughs> to other to departments might be useful. Yeah, so it lists primary responsibilities. So yeah. Um, I think including a uh, you know statutory authority in there under those responsibilities would be a good idea. In case you know, just in case somebody looks through this, like I don't, you know, somebody questions whether or not this committee, the Land and Water Force Resource Committee, is uh, authorized to do whatever, or you know, they're like yeah, yeah, we are. It's right in the policy procedure manual. If you look up 2011 Wisconsin statute. Okay, does anybody else have any uh, further input for Andy before this comes back next month? All right, if not, I think we can move on to the next item 11, which is zoning conservation department with the uh, county report. Yeah, and I can just go through that. I'm just trying to multitask here today. Um, Multiple site visits uh, still are, are busy time of the year. So uh, multiple site visits for conservation staff, uh, including the non-metallic mining operation inspections. Uh, those were just concluded here last week. Uh, we did the installation of a uh, cattle watering system as part of the conservation department and using some of those uh, Department of Agricultural Trade and Consumer Protection funds. Um, I mean, that is what the conservation department is, is for is, you know, to uh, take that DAG cap money and fund specific projects, and that is one of those eligible projects. Um, we've had several discussions over the uh, Billy Boy Dam and the water levels as it affects Le Couture grindstone, little Le Couture, and then in turn sand and whitefish. Uh, we are having those discussions with the Couture Lake Association, the LCO tribe, and the DNR. Uh, there was an old public service commission order that was uh, initially set those water levels back in 1953. And there's quite a bit of errors in that 1953 order. Uh, a lot of, lot of kind of holes in there. Uh, theoretically, Grindstone, LCO, and Little LCO are all supposed to be the same lake level, which will, you'll never have happen because they all move downstream in the system. 
Uh, the old benchmark for where the official water level is to be taken is no longer there, and that resort is no longer there, so it's now relocating a gauge. Uh, so that one's still in discussion. Um, Price Dam, we talked about this a couple months ago. We had a, a broken winch on one of the gates there. That's actually a two-gate system. One of them is functioning with the lift gate. Uh, the other one is not. It would have to be manually cranked, which is a uh, very difficult process on that gate. So that one is out for repairs and we're waiting to see back if they can actually repair it or if they're gonna have to replace it. Um, and we'll, we'll keep you updated on that. They just got into it, I believe last week and it, it could be a several week process to fix that thing. So uh, aquatic invasive species training um, was done at the Muskie Fest booth. Um, we also had clean boats and clean waters training. I should also mention that um, myself and Natalie Erler, um, our, our um, conservation technician, uh, we are also on the Grindstone Lake Management Plan. Grindstone Lake is, is looking at doing a management plan, so we've been helping out with that through um, aquatic in invasive species as well as kind of just zoning matters in general. So um, Northwest Lakes Conference, which is always a fun one to attend, staff went to that. And we didn't necessarily have the pre-construction meeting for the upper Bruni River Dam yet, but we did have the DNR engineer county meeting. Uh, so we'll be scheduling the actual pre-construction meeting with the contractor that we awarded the bid to next week. And we're still somewhat on track by late August, starting the drawdown and having that kind of fully drawn down by the middle end of September and concrete work uh, starting right then and thereafter. So we're going to be hitting the ground running here within the next month and a half full full blow. So uh, any other questions? I mean, is, do you foresee anything getting in the way of that timeline of the Brunet Dam project? And Mother Nature can always throw a wrench into some of that stuff. Um, we do have a six inch maximum drawdown per day. And that's kind of one of the larger timing aspects that we need to carefully monitor in that, you know, if we pull one of the stop logs on that, you know, is it draining two inches a day? So we're needing to remove three stop logs to get it to six inches a day or by removing three, is it now eight inches a day and we have to back off? So that's gonna be a little bit of a trial and error for that first week of the drawdown. Um, but I, I still don't see that being a setback. The only setback other issues I would see is, you know, unforeseen events and or uh, supply chain for the actual steel gate uh, fabrication. Uh, that isn't proposed for those steel gates until spring of next year but they'd be starting the shop drawings and you know, starting to get that, uh, that gate fabricated into late fall, winter, but uh, the steel market is very uh, volatile right now. So that would be the other thing is a supply chain shortage issue. Okay. Any you know, other questions? Yeah, we have uh, another question. Uh, Jay, I just was wondering, I said Peters, just wondering whether or not um, the uh, there's any, but potential conflict between the price dam uh, problem of the gate and then the uh, additional water coming through from Lake Loretta. Right, and that has not been anticipated. Uh, again, one of the gates is still functioning properly, so we can open a full gate all the way. We could even manually you know, crank the other gate. Like I said, it is a process. Um, sure. It's actually, it's not just, you know, a pulley on a winch. It's, uh, you would actually have to take a, a drill with an impact and uh, spin a bolt that very, very, very slowly would end up lifting the gate. Um, then it's a matter of, okay, you know, we may even have to run electricity out there on a thousand foot extension cord to even you know, have that type of equipment there because the battery pack one might not be able to keep up. But as far as the water coming out of Lake Loretta downstream into Lake Winter, it was not anticipated that it would have, you know, that additional flow that we would need both gates functioning. Uh, those both gates functioning need to be replaced in the event of a, you know, 100 year storm event. Uh, but even the water that's being let out of Lake Loretta as a six inch drawdown would not equivalent to a 100 year storm event. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anybody else? All right. Uh, thanks, Jay. Going on to uh, 11B USDA report. 
um, both Rust and Sawyer County office and Eau Claire office are in the process of hiring a full-time technician. Uh, PT Liz Hare Haley of Chippewa County is retiring after 36 years of service. Uh, we're currently seeking a field assistant uh, to cover Eau Claire, Chippewa, Rust, and Sawyer County to help uh, check bends and other things on the farms. Um, FSA um, committee nomination period is currently open. Um, Sawyer County does not have anybody uh, for a nomination right now. Both positions are filled. Um, the office is busy with reporting, crop reporting right now. Um, July 15th is the deadline to avoid late fees. Uh, emergency relief program is announced to help offset the impact of natural disasters for 20 and 21. Phase one runs through July 22nd of 2022 year. And then there'll be a second phase coming up. And then the food safety certification for special crops program will be announced. It's accepting applications um, from now till January 31st, uh, 2023. Thanks, Kevin. Any questions for Mr. Shepley? Okay, uh, go to the LCO report, Brian. Um, things pertinent to the Sawyer County community would be uh, we're still dealing daily with very nuisance calls. We have to relocate eight of them so far. Another point of interest would be we had a fish kill on Bruno Lake this year. Our biologists have been working with the DNR fisheries uh, biologist. Uh, it's a bacterial um, infection that's kill, killing the basically panfish, and so it was pretty substantial in that lake. And they were uh, they were advising me that expected to be on other lakes. I don't know if any other lakes have been reported. Um, but, uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't good. So what, what was the name of that lake? Gurnal Lake. Gurnal. It's, a, it's a little lake that, uh, we both have tribal, non-tribal members living on the lake. It's right off the County Road E and Gurnal Lake Road is kind of, uh, I guess it would be south of like our LCYG about four miles. <clears throat> Yeah, there's not good access there, so a lot of people don't, other than the locals, um, they don't utilize it. But so we've been kind of monitoring the lakes to see if it's uh, it's anywhere else. I know that they had a, a similar issue, I think it was in Lake Michigan. Um, mm -hmm. But there's been other reported incidents throughout the state on it. So. Has the DNR gotten involved with that or given any yeah, we have, Well, LCO has, we have our own uh, LCO fish hatchery biologist, fishery biologist, who, uh, you know, pretty much we work with the DNR all the time. So, okay. All right, thanks. Any questions for Brian? Okay, number 12, Surrey County Forestry Department. Recreational trails report. Um, as far as the trails go, it's pretty busy right now. Obviously, everyone can see all the ATVs running all over the place. Um, we did have two Tuscobia grants out for bids that were due last Friday, I believe. Um, unfortunately, we only got one bid total between the two grants. Um, the good thing was, is the one bid we got was under the grant amount, so we were able to sell the one project, hopefully. Um, I'm not sure when Greg will have that ready and brought to you guys, but um, the other one we got no bids on, so I guess we'll have to just try to bid it out again with some other projects that we do in the future. Um, as far as trails, otherwise, they're out there doing some maintenance on them. Um, I know they had a dozer on a couple of them trying to get them shaped, reshaped, because after a while, they just get blown apart and you really can't use any other equipment besides a dozer. Um, and they try to get signage and put it on Facebook and everyone. So people aren't coming around the corner and seeing a dozer in the middle of the trail. Um, but otherwise that's about it on the trails. As far as that goes. Um, 
Kathy, do you have anything additional or? Um, I moved to the, the three counters that we have up into the Sealy Hills area. Trail 31 gets an average daily traffic count of 200. So that's a, that's a heavily used trail. Um, the other the other two counters I put on different areas of trail eight and that averages about 65 daily count. Um, I'm gonna keep those on that trail system and then move them over to the eastern portion. And, and yes, I was gonna mention the same thing you just mentioned. We've been doing some bulldozing work up on uh, 77. We did some on 31, eight. Um, we've been grading some work on trail five and they've been following up with grading. They're grading the Tuscobia on, on a regular basis as well. And we put in for a grant, um, we haven't obviously haven't heard back on it yet, but for a small shelter alongside the Tuscobia near Nine Mile Loop. So we're kind of excited about that, just an enhancement grant, I believe it's called. Hmm. Okay. That's about it. Um, okay, thanks. Any non motorized? Reports probably not. Um, so the county forestry report. Um, Saying, sorry, what, what was your name? I Kyle. Know. Kyle. Okay, thanks. So. What's Kyle? What's your last name? Cummings. C U M M I N G S. Yep. Um, yes. Yeah, so the June report, we had seven sales active for the month of June. Um, closed out eleven sales from the winter, basically. Um, it wasn't, as far as the weather goes, it was dry enough that we were able to get quite a few crews in, um, anticipating now that the uh, oak wilt restrictions come off here on the 15th, so Friday, I believe that is. Um, so we should get some more crews moving in then, once we, that opens up quite a bit of sales for us with the oak wilt restrictions. Um, and then that also puts on more work because the oak wilt's going to start showing now here in the next couple weeks through the next couple months. Um, so we're going to have to start going out and taking care of that, treating those infections we find. Um, but so that'll get us busy with that. Um, timber revenue in June, just over 21,000. Year to date, we're just under six hundred thousand. Otherwise, we had good neighbor authority. We finished all of our work and got that to the DNR for the last year's projects. So the oak, oak wilt. We haven't found any new infections yet this year, but. I believe the DNR is going to be doing the flights again. That usually helps us find the kind of sporadic ones that we don't bump into when we're out there. Otherwise, we'll kind of spend towards the end of the month and in the August, we'll spend a few days just kind of driving around looking for oak wilt infections or stuff we hear from people because the quicker we can get on it, the better off it is, the less we have to treat. Um, so if, I guess if anybody sees anything that looks like oak wilt when you're out there, feel free to let us know as soon as possible. That way we can get on it and get it treated right away. Keeps it from spreading and getting more infections throughout the county. Um, I believe in the last five years, we pretty much have treated three to six sites a year throughout the county at this point now. It's pretty much all the way from Birchwood up to Bayfield County. So um, ash borer, I guess there's been an infestation by the Moose Lake campground from what I've heard. Um, sounds like it's been there for a few years at least. So they're working on taking care of that. Otherwise, Nothing really on the bike trails, Berkey. Uh, I already mentioned the ATV grant that we received from Thompson's. Uh, 
Hatcher. He's got nothing, Nelson, nothing, Tom. And then, yes, yeah, as Barb did mention, we're going to, Greg's going to designate that area of the Sealy Hills, the class A area, which is the same as what we do for the Berkey. <clears throat> so, well, as far as management wise, we just treat it as the same buffers of the Berkey that we have buffered, but the same area of the Berkey. Um, and we're just gonna break our sails into smaller patches instead of large continuous blocks of clear cut which will help break everything up through that. Yeah, I got a note from Greg says uh, that Sealy Hills area, um, he's presented and supports a proposal to designate the area as a class A aesthetic zone, uh, which you know, we'll bring forward later this, this summer you know, to make that formal. So yeah, that's, that sounds like a, a pretty good compromise. Yeah, and as far as our management, I mean, we're still going to be able to manage all the timber in that block. Yeah. We just have to do different timber sales shapes and stuff like that to make it. Yeah. Little. All right. Great. Uh, any questions for Kyle? Uh, if yeah. not, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Um, so I was texting one of our loggers that we contract with for firewood yesterday. And since he brought up Oakwell, because I was going to question him on that, he had made mention that he can't move any oak until a certain date. Now, is that that has to, that coincides with what you're saying? Is the reason with Oakwell? Yeah, I mean, July. Realistically, you don't want to <clears throat> you don't want to transport it or harvest it or damage it from April fifteenth to July fifteenth. Okay. That's when the beetles are out the most transmitting it. So potentially if you move a load from an infested area to an area that's not infested currently, and then you had a hail storm or something that damaged a bunch of your oak trees, those beetles could go off and transmit it. Yeah. So it's probably the safest practice just to not move it until July after July 15th. And after July 15th, they done studies and that shows when the beetle population basically declines to a point where it's not a real big issue anymore. So yeah, it's just the safest practice is just to not, <laughs> not trim your trees, do anything as far as with oak until after July 15th. And then after that, you're, you're not out of the woods, but it's a lot safer. They found way less transmission and stuff after that date. All right, DNR, DNR Forest Report. Okay, um, could you mind stepping up a little bit so people uh, can hear on you on the mic that are online? Thanks. <laughs> County Forest time standards. Um, the contract period ended on uh, June 18th for fiscal year 2022. Uh, DNR provided uh, 2,294 and a half hours of service to the county with a goal of 22,189 hours. Uh, assistance was provided for prescribed burning, site scarification to promote tree regeneration, reconnaissance, regen surveys, and timber sale establishment. Uh, for fiscal year 2023, the goal is to provide uh, 2,217 hours of service, which is a slight uptick. And the annual partnership meeting will be scheduled for later this year. Um, forest health update, I got some info to pass along from Paul Segan, as discussed here today. A detection flight will be done uh, in August. Uh, when sites are found, they GPS them from the air and then we pass those along to Greg. Um, catastrophic hail injury. We're starting to get quite a few phone calls for from dead branches, um, yellowing leaves and brown needles. Um, that hailstorm that uh, occurred on May 9th, uh, I'll just kind of give you the summarize this. You can kind of read the rest of it on your own. The longer term impacts of the hail injury on trees will vary depending on the location of hail fall intensity, tree species and age 
and growing, se growing season condition as trees recover over the several years. Uh, the, the aspen and white pine in areas of severe injury greater than 75% defoliation are likely to experience severe crown dieback and possible mortality and decline leading to mortality in the next several years. Uh, if we have an abnormally dry weather here this summer, there'll be further stressors such as uh, two-line chestnuts, chestnut borer, uh, diplodia, locust borer, and shoestring root rot. Uh, oak leaf roller, there's been an outbreak uh, in northwestern Wisconsin this spring. Um, it is partially to fully consumed oak leaves. Um, the damage has ranged from 75 to 50 percent leaf loss. Um, as of right now, the infestation is over. Uh, the moths are in flight and it's pretty much come to an end. A lot of the trees have begun to reflush. Uh, but that also kind of comes at a price too, where energy reserves are drawn upon to support new leaf growth while being reallocated from other important functions like pest defense. Um, Kyle mentioned that there's been another emerald ash borer detection uh, on the Forest Service land near Moose Lake. Uh, it's been there for quite a while and there's many ash uh, in decline. Uh, I got an email this morning from Jared Carruthers. As of, as of right now, what they're doing is they've posted signs prohibiting um, the harvesting of firewood in that area. And they're just gonna monitor uh, the outbreak for now. Um, EAB was first detected in the county near Radisson in 2016 and statewide. It's now present in 58 out of 72 counties. Uh, the most severe damage in the, is in the southern half of the state. And EAB attacks all species of ash, except for mountain ash, which are not true ash leaves. Uh, parks and recreation. Um, the Connors Creek ATV bridge. Um, there's been a new bridge ordered. Uh, the tentative timeline is to remove the old bridge um, at the end of August and install the new bridge around September 30th. However, there, there's some supply chain issues. Uh, if all goes well, uh, the trail should be reopened this fall and we won't have to use the road ditch along Highway M this winter. And as um, Mr. Bissonnette has touched upon, there's been a, a fish kill that occurred on Gurno, Teal, and Lacouter A. Uh, Max went out and looked at the one on Lacouter A and exact causes, uh, he said, were not known, but um, heat and fungi are likely contributors, uh, mostly affected panfish. Uh, there's supposed to be no long-term concerns, but uh, the event is probably already over. So that's all I have to pass along. Uh, this was a couple of weeks ago. And oh. We've been kind of monitoring okay. it and we haven't seen anything else. So. Yeah, it's, it, I should have made it clear that, it, you know, the assessment by our fisheries biologists that it was bacterial related. Um, you know, there's, we are positive on that, but there wasn't a health concern from our biologists or, or uh, DNR or that, so. Is there a, you mean a health concern for, for human consumption? Yeah. Or well, yeah. believe it or not, we had people that were actually because I mean it's apparently happening pretty rapidly, and so there was actually people out there collecting dead fish and wanting to know if they could consume them, and so we didn't recommend it. But <laughs> but again, you know, it goes back to uh, um, you know they, they didn't have a concern with. I mean, if you're going to go fishing and caught a live fish, that you're going to good to go. Yeah, it's going to create some kind of health issue or something like that. But, so we yeah, we had a combination of the two. It's a, can imagine when we want to eat that fish. Tender. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any more questions for you know? If not, we are going to uh, go into closed session. This we need a motion. We need a motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And roll call vote. Um, item twelve D is says closed session. So uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion to go into closed session. 
uh, to discuss some things. I'll make a motion to Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Best to go into closed session. We have a second. I second that. And we have a second for the discussion. Okay, we're going to need a roll call vote on this one. Mr. Betcher? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mr. Weaver? Yes. Mr. Helwig? Yes. Mr. Bizonette? Yes. Mr. Shepton? Yes. Okay, what else do we need to do? Who else has to, does, who can stay? It's up to you. As the, as the chair of the meeting, you get to determine if it's anybody that needs, the general rule is anybody has a need to know basis. So the committee, any county board members, if there was others outside the committee, and then any staff that. Uh, okay, so we are in uh, open session and what do we need to, do we need to say anything? Same thing. You want to go into there's a yeah, no, I know for a closed session. Right, but do I need to say anything for the record? About oh, no action the, was taken. No action. Okay, so no action was taken in closed session. Uh, so now we are going to go back into closed session. Yep. If we get a, a motion in a second and a, and a vote no on that, so <laughs> we're on number thirteen now. Yeah. So looking for a motion to go into closed session to discuss carbon credit. Um, we have a motion by Mr. Peters. I'll second. Second by Mr. Sheptic. And uh, any further discussion? If not, we need a roll call vote on this as well. Mr. Betcher. Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mr. Weaver. Yes. Mr. Helwig. Yes. Mr. Bizonette. Yes. Mr. Shepke. Yes. Okay. Um, so we're in back in. We are back in open session, and we have no. What's the word, Andy? No, no action. No, no, no action. action. Okay. So we'll move on to number fourteen. Item fourteen: future agenda items. We already discussed a couple things that we said need to be the last two okay the session items. And there was something else though. Did you get that one? Something earlier that the board, the rules responsibilities of the committee. Yes. Yes. Okay, that was it. Anything uh, anybody have anything else for any future agenda items? Okay. Number 15, correspondence reports from conferences and meetings and other matters for discussion only. Anything else about anything from anyone? Okay, um, hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you.